Of course, everyone can have PTSD, including our children. Yeah. Hey Amen. If you abuse them, right? Yep. They will have PTSD. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we're living in a fallen world. But praise God, we conquered cancer, we conquered PTSD. Uh, now I'm trying to conquer gout. <laughs> I think I'm on a regular maintenance now every day to keep my purine low by uric acid. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, we, we conquered COVID, we conquered financial mountains, giants, uh, we're more than conquerors. We are indestructible. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So, praise the Lord. Again, God is good. Thank God for the house church. Now we can freely preach the gospel to the world. And that's what we're going today. We're going to preach the gospel to the world. Amen. So let's ask the Lord to bless his word now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you that we are saved. We are born again. We know we have everlasting life. Thank you for giving us saving faith. Thank you for the house church and thank you for the souls that are listening today. And I pray that you will save, that you will draw, that you will plant the seeds of the gospel in their hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we're going to talk about science of salvation. That's our topic, right? That's our title. Science of salvation. We're going to Matthew 5. Matthew 5 to 7 is about the Sermon on the Mount. But we're going to read Matthew 7, verse 13. If you look at Matthew 5 to 7, it's called the Sermon on the Mount. And look at what Jesus preached. He talked about the Ten Commandments, uh, like murder, adultery, uh, divorce, he talked about a lot of things, uh, you know, but, but when it comes to Matthew 7, he talked about uh, self-deception, deception, right? He talked about false religions, he talked about false teachers, false prophets, so every time he talked about Every time we expose deception, you know, counterfeit gospels, uh, false teachings, we know that we are obeying, that we are following Jesus' outline. Amen? If Jesus talked about being born again in John chapter 3, if Jesus warned about counterfeit Christianity, then you expect to hear the same thing from me. Amen? Although we focus more on the gospel, because as I've said before, I am the evangelist of the Lord. And I believe people get saved when they hear the gospel. You know, it's amazing that in, in YouTube, in Facebook, you see how you hear a lot of shorts. So many preachers, there's nothing wrong with that. It's still the word of God, including prosperity preachers. They use the word of God to encourage. Amen. But the gospel is a, has a different purpose. It's to save. Amen. So if you hear me talking more and more about the gospel, because our main mission here is we want to save maybe 50 more people out there. There's so much encouraging words already from pastors, teachers, but you know, what evangelists do, what apologists do, they talk about the gospel all the time. So now we're going to talk about Signs of salvation. But first the warning. Jesus said in verse 13. Enter by the narrow gate. Matthew 7 verse 13. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who enter by the wide broad gate. Because narrow is the gate. Narrow is the door and difficult is the way which leads to everlasting life and there are few who finds it. Okay, again, this is a warning from Jesus. 
Then he says in verse 15, beware of false prophets, false teachers, preaching false gospels, who come to you in sheep's clothing. They will come to you pretending like they're true, wearing sheep's clothing. They will pretend that they are Christians. Amen? But inwardly, they are predators. Okay, ravenous walls. You will know them by their fruits. By their fruits, you will know them. Just like a bad tree will produce bad fruit. That's what Jesus said, verse 70 to 20. A bad tree will produce bad fruit. A good tree will produce good fruit. Amen? Every tree, verse 19, that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and burned. Burned. Thrown into the fire. So now we're going to talk about how do you know if you are really saved? But first, let's talk about self-deception. Many are deceived. Okay? And many don't really know that they are deceived. They are unaware that they are self-deceived. Jesus said, wide is the gate. Many people enter the wide gate. Amen. So in this house, there's only one door you can enter in. You can't enter the back gate because it's locked. It's locked. <laughs> We're fenced all around the backyard. Uh, you can't enter by the windows because they're all closed. So you have to enter the main door. Yeah. Jesus said, he who enters by the back door is a thief and a robber. Magnanakaw yun. Huwag kumakit sa pader, magnanakaw yun. Yung sabi ni Jesus, right? So, like, like false teachers, you know, counterfeit false teachers, of course, they have counterfeit followers. Of course, their followers are also counterfeit. The blind, Jesus described them as the blind, leading the blind. Both of them will fall in the ditch. But Jesus, here's the warning. The wide gate is appealing, more appealing. The wide gate is more appealing because it's easy to enter. Right? It's very easy to enter the wide gate. Okay? There are many that are entering, but it will lead to destruction, deception, hell, judgment. But narrow is the gate. Jesus is the only way. And I'm preaching this to the world. If you want to get saved, Jesus is the only way. Narrow is the way that leads to everlasting life. And there are few, only few, discover Jesus the way as the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one enters my kingdom, no one can go to the Father except through me. So narrow, there's only one door to heaven. Jesus said, I am the door. He who enters by me will be saved. I think that's in John chapter 10. He's the door. There is no other way. So if you want to have everlasting life, salvation, forgiveness of sins, Jesus is the only door. If you want to be a Christian, you want salvation without going to Jesus, it's the wide door. Right? It's easier to enter. It will deceive you, but it will destroy you. Okay? Amen. Another warning. Jesus never said the Baptist church is the door, or the Pentecostal church, or the full, full gospel church. Jesus never said religion is the door. He never taught religions. In fact, he condemned the religion of the Pharisees, Judaism. So a lot of people enter religion. And they enter religion. They're proud to be Muslims. They're proud to be followers of Kibuloi or uh, Soriano, right? Is it René Soriano? They're, they defend their religion. They're more loyal towards their religion. But they don't know Christ. Amen. So yung mga nakikinig sa online, si Kristo lang po ang daan. Wala na pong iba. 
if all you believe in if you are just believing in religion in your church the Baptist church the full gospel church if you think they are the way to salvation then you are wrong it's the broad gate amen do you know that it is much easier to attend church than to become a disciple of Jesus? A lot of people sometimes they just want to attend church. But to be a follower of Jesus, it's very difficult. It's true. Jesus said difficult is the way. Only few discover the way because it is difficult. Right? It's difficult. Amen. There are few people who find it because there is a price to pay. It requires genuine faith and repentance. Amen. It requires getting saved, requires believing in Jesus, accepting that He is the only way. You may have to give up your religion. If you're a Muslim, a Buddhist, you may have to give it up in order to follow Jesus. But the problem nowadays is so many people are deceived by their religion that they're not willing to give it up. They're not willing to give up the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Followers of Kibul. They're not willing to give up Undating Dan. They're not willing to give up JWs, whatever their religion is. Or, you know, Buddha or Allah, they're not willing to give up because they're deceived. Amen? Now, there will be false prophets, false teachers. Beware of them because they, they pretend to be, they come in sheep's clothing. You know, sometimes when I watch uh, videos on YouTube about some preachers like Ben Hinn wearing like white expensive suit right uh, there's one preacher famous preacher I think from Hong Kong always elegant right <laughs> you know look at what I'm wearing today that's good <laughs> 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 You're good. Amen. The heart is more important. See, you know, beware of wearing this flashy, expensive, you know, don't, are these like modern day Pharisees wearing white robes? But Jesus said inside they're full of rotten bones. They're like whitewashed tombs, but inside rotten mm -hmm. bones. Mm -hmm. Nitso cemetery. So beware of false prophets because outwardly they will convince you. They will look respectable, believable, but they are ravenous walls. Verse 15. Predators. Mm. Right? And then here's how you detect them. By their fruits you shall know them. Look at their fruits. Look at their lives. Right? Do you see godliness, righteousness? Amen. So that one of the signs of salvation is not only you believe in the true way, the narrow path, but life transformation. You believe in the narrow path, Jesus Christ. The only way. And then there's life transformation. So by their fruits, you shall know them. That's why our topic today is signs of salvation. You will know that you are saved. But our introduction is, let's, let's be all beware. Let, let's consider the warning of Jesus. Jesus said, there's only one way. It is difficult to enter. And there's counterfeit Christians out there. Who are deceived. Right? So the first sign that you are really saved is you believe in Jesus. No argument about that. Right? You believe in Jesus. 
Amen. You don't defend your Catholic religion, whatever background, you don't defend it. You are quick to acknowledge that Jesus is the only way. Right? And by the way, another warning, this famous preacher, Joel Osteen, was interviewed, I think, by Oprah or on, on live, Larry King. Uh, I can't remember, but it's national television, major big time news. He was asked, is Jesus the only way? If you cannot answer this straight, black and white, then you're a false teacher. Amen. You know what he said? I don't want to quote him, but he seemed to have said, uh, there are other ways to God, something like that. Hmm. He did not defend, he did not confirm that Jesus is the only way. Hmm. Uh, if you can't do that, then you are a false teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And what are the fruits? He was also interviewed on TV. Is homosexuality sin? Mm -hmm. Of course, he doesn't want to offend 30% of his congregation. Mm -hmm. And so he has to produce a neutral answer. Yeah. He couldn't even say, yes, it's sin. Well, if they ask me, I'll go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 right away. Where Paul said, you know, those who practice adultery, homosexuality, Backwards. murder, adultery, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. The word homosexual was in that group. The group of sinners, sins, types of sins committed that will disqualify you from entering the kingdom of God. It's in the Bible. You know what? I don't get millions to preach this. I don't get millions to preach this. They get millions to lie to you. Right. So that when, when you hear their smooth preaching, you feel good about yourself. God loves me. I don't need to repent. See, false prophets, they come to you in sheep's clothing. Sheep's clothing. Do you know that Joel is seen? If you're listening to me, you know, praise God. Amen? So I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, I'm not going to retract. At the end of every sermon, he leads people to say the sinner's prayer. Buti pa yung aso ko, matalino eh. Bigyan mo ng baga yun, hindi niya kakainin yun. Bigyan mo ng bato, hindi niya papansinin yun. Daga, hindi niya kinain. Patay na daga. Pero bigyan mo ng apple. Kahit walang ipin yun. Bungal na yun, labing anim ang binatan. Well, anyway, able to discern what is edible and what is not. And yet, deceive people, you know, I, I don't mean to judge or to sound rude or arrogant, but I'm saying this to save souls. Amen? Are you able to detect what you are hearing? Are you able to discern what you are hearing? If they are not preaching the gospel, if they don't talk about sin and repentance, then, then false teachers, false prophets. Okay. So first sign of salvation, you defend Jesus as the only way. You believe in that. You don't argue. Secondly, by their fruit, you shall know them. Look at your lives. Are you a progressive Christian? You know what a progressive Christian is? If they legalize marijuana, oh, it's okay to smoke marijuana. It's progressing. Mm. To them, the gospel is changing in its mm. meaning and definition. If they declare abortion is now legal, it's okay to commit abortion. It's okay to gamble now. It's okay to, to practice, uh, you know, common, uh, common law. Whatever, you know, everything is legal now. Uh, Male to male, female to female, 
gay marriage, every, because it's all legal now. So God honors it. That's progressive Christian. But you know, I'm not a pro. Are you a progressive Christian? I'm not. That's why they hated Christ. The Pharisees hated Christ. Right? Because he spoke the truth. And the Pharisees were always offended by the truth. Right? Amen. So science of salvation. Look at their fruits. Buy their fruits. See, then Jesus said, a good tree will produce good fruits. See, if you have been grafted in the vine, you know, John 15, Jesus talks about, I am the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you have been grafted in Christ, you know what grafting is? Right? You know what grafting is? You can attend. You want to listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ? T.W.? Bakit ayaw nila makinig ng gospel? Amen. J.W. is knocking at the door. Amen. Uh, okay. Grafting. Jesus said, a good tree will produce good fruit. If you have been grafted in Christ, Jesus said, John 15, I am the vine. If you have been grafted to the vine, your life will produce truth, mm. righteousness, godliness. <clears throat> Amen? So look at our lives. Are we fake or real? That's how you know. And when you see a, 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 somebody who said, I'm a Christian, but he can do things without conviction, stay away from that person. Baka mahawa ka pa. I mean, this is, I'm not being Possibly. angry here. It's just the truth. Possibly. Baka maging kagaya ka nun. Mm. Right? Nagdi-disco ka na rin. Umiinom ka na rin. Naglalasing ka na rin. <laughs> Progressive. <laughs> Progressive Christian ka na. Yeah. Then, no, wala nang masama magtaya-taya minsan. <laughs> Kasino. <laughs> Hmm. So anyway, if you are really grafted in Christ, you will be like Christ. Amen? Now if your life is not changing, you should evaluate yourself before it's too late. Amen? So let's go now to Luke chapter 13. Another verse where Jesus said, this is just my introduction, so we're halfway. Luke chapter 13, verse 24. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. Luke 13, verse 24. Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, again, the narrow path. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter, but will not be able. See, sabi ni Jesus. Jesus said, strive, you know, make an effort, do your best. Of course, salvation is the work of God, right? Uh, we're not saved by good works. We already know that. When Jesus said, strive to enter through the narrow gate, uh, I believe that simply means you have to have an... Uh, you need to have an open mind, amen, not a closed mind, and then and accept correction, right? Uh, accept, if the Spirit convicts you, you have to admit that you are a sinner, right? You don't defend that you are self-righteous. If the Spirit is revealing to you that Jesus is the only way, you stop arguing. Mm -hmm. You know why those people will not accept Jesus as the only way? Because God is not opening their minds. They're blind. We need the Holy Spirit here, the work of God. 
See, when Jesus said strive, when the Spirit draws you, illuminates you, open your heart. Mm. Be willing to give up everything. Amen? Amen? Strive to enter that narrow gate because it will save you. Mm. Amen? Yeah. I say to you, many will seek to enter. They will try to enter that narrow door. But they will Fail. This is Jesus preaching the gospel. You know what Jesus said? It's easier. Another verse in the Bible where Jesus said, It is much easier to enter the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Mm. You know what the eye of a needle is in the Bible in the Bible times? The, the walls of Jerusalem has narrow uh, entrance and a donkey, you can only make a donkey go through that door. That, it's like a hole in the wall, right? There's a huge wall and there's like holes to, for people to enter, yeah. take their animals. Now unload. a donkey with a lot of garbage, I mean, not garbage, luggage. <laughs> with a lot of luggage. Para yung mga umuwi ng Pilipinas, ano? And a rider. Ito ko ito lang talaga. Mister, you eh. May nakaalam na uuwi kami. Binilang kami. Alam nyo ba, tagagalawa kayong box? Pwede ba yung isang box sa amin? Sabi ko pwede, $200. Wow, what naman tayo sa plano? Overload. Sorry. 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 Kesa yung di airport pa lang eh, pinagtitingin ako doon na ka. <laughs> Na-stress ka na. <laughs> Isang trailer yung ina-unload mo eh, no? <laughs> But really, that happened to us. 2010, there were five of us. We, we had a lot, yeah. Anyway, let's go back to our topic now. So the, the donkey, you have to remove all the luggages. Yeah, or it ride. cannot enter, it yeah. cannot go through. And the rider, you have to get So, it. in the kingdom of God, if you have a lot of sins, you don't want to give up. Mm. Practices, you don't want to give up. Okay. You don't want to give up your religion, yeah. mm. your associations, your clubs. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? And then, true, Jesus said, a lot of people try to enter with their luggages. Nagbawas na yun. <laughs> Hindi pa rin makapasok. Marami nang ina, marami nang ina, siguro pwede ko nang alisin to, alisin ko to. <laughs> Hindi lahat. Pero, ito, hindi ko pwede bitawan to. Nakakadena to eh. <laughs> Religion. So you imagine, how can you enter the kingdom of God with an extra luggage That lot luggage is preventing you from going through. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, somehow, going to, you know, it's like a survival thing, right? You, you have to learn, whatever will make you enter, do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Because it's your soul. Yeah. Give it up! Amen. Life and death, yeah. Yeah. Give it up if it's homosexuality, if it's lesbianism, if it is adultery, if it is fornication, if it is uh, the lust of the flesh, if it, it, if, if it is greed, if it is, uh, you know, I'm a Christian, but uh, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, CRA, you work as a CRA telemarketer or a Cancun, I, I wonder what happened to those Cancun callers. Yes, sir, you want to go to Mexico? <laughs> Some of them are legit, but, but I think they scam you with additional charges, right? Mm. 
When you're there. Yeah. And there was a batch din na lang sa island. Hindi naman sa kanto. Dala sa Vancouver Island. Sa kapino magsakit. Yeah, I mean, beware. There, there's a catch, right, to these things. You have to be discerning. You know what? They're victimizing are are the simple-minded, the easy to get deceived, the gullible, right? So yeah, it's true. That's why many are are failing to enter the kingdom of God. Because they can no longer give up their old religion. They've already invested so many years. Whatever, their business, they have a, a beer house, they can't give it up. Yeah, we, we used to have a family beer house, you know, in the Philippines. Wow. Yeah, my dad opened the beer house in Buendia. Awesome. But business. But well, you know what God did? He bankrupted it in three months. <laughs> three months? Yeah, he bankrupted the business. Good. <laughs> I remember going there. My best friend was cashier. We were just teenagers. And the Agogo dancers were there. Oh. Delicado sa amin yun. <laughs> Delicado kami doon. Teenager lang. And God bankrupted the business. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> His partner was stealing all the money. So... Oh. They almost fought, right? <laughs> Another agent. So, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So you must be willing to give up every many try, but will not be able. Mm-hmm. You end up religion. Religious. Yeah. I mean, because Christianity, if you're really saved, that requires honesty. If you're really transformed, you will always tell the truth, not lies. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So if you became a Christian and you are declaring that you are separated, but you're not, you got reconciled and you're living in the same address, they will know it. They will know it. And, and if you've been get, getting more CPP old age for the last 10 years, you have to return it now. And GST, yeah. Because you're lying. Yes, See why, why it's difficult to enter that narrow door? It is much easier to attend church than to become a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Right? Mm-hmm. We're talking about genuine salvation. So yeah, Jesus said they will fail. See, even Jesus. You know, that's why I hate these smooth talkers on YouTube. Preachers. Prosperity preachers trying to to make everything sound smooth. So you go, oh, I like that. I will send fifty dollars, mm-hmm. right? Prosperity gospels. You're not being saved. Like this, this is like like Asian Hong Kong guy, you know, always we- wearing baguettes, flashy clothes, with like he looks like Bruce Lee. You know, I've been listening to him two or three times. I'm waiting for him to preach on repentance and salvation. He does not preach that. How will his listeners get saved? When you're not preaching the gospel. It's false prophets, false teachers. Amen. That's why, yeah, people, a lot of people think, oh yeah, I've been following Ben Heen, so I must be a Christian. I've been following... Joyce Mayer, so I must be a Christian. I've been attending Joe Willis Church, so I must be a Christian. I've been listening to Rene Soriano, Kibula, so I must be a Christian. You know, Jesus said, this is the broad gate. Many enter the broad gate. So, gusto niyo maligaw, huwag kayo bumunta kay Pastor Alvin. So, smooth talker kayo, smooth talker. <laughs> but then they dig dig on preaching John. <laughs> Kung gusto niyo kumain ng peke, go ahead. The Broadway, Broadway. I only have 12, 15, 20 disciples here, but I want to make sure everyone is saved. Amen. 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 Praise God. 
We're not after the numbers. Amen. We're not after the crowds. The crowds will hate my message, just like what they did to Jesus. You know the crowds that ate from the 5,000? The 5,000 multitudes who ate from the two fish and the bread? Mm-hmm. When Jesus started talking about, you must drink my blood. Eat my flesh. And eat my flesh. Cannibals. Cannibals. They started complaining. <laughs> they said, this is a very difficult teaching. Mm-hmm. Who will understand this? Mm-hmm. Amen. And they all walked away. Crowds. Mm-hmm. Amen. So, it's not the numbers. It's the salvation that matters. Okay, let's go to another verse now in 1 John. Another sign that you are saved. So the third sign that you are saved is you're willing to pay more the cost of true discipleship. You're not bargaining. Hindi tayo yung tawad ng tawad. Pwede ba $10 na lang yan? Pwede ba $9 na lang yan? Pachip ng pachip, ano? You know, as you grow in Christ, you pay more. You pay more. You know, 30 years, we've been paying the price. Amen? And there's gonna be more. The price goes up every time. Right? Did you receive your property tax already? Good Assessment. for you. Assessment. I stressed out last time. I didn't know. Should I open it or after Sunday? <laughs> oh, what's the pay? I don't want to get discouraged. <laughs> but every year we pay it anyway. More. more Amen? And more and more. And the Lord enables us to pay. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. So we're willing to pay the price of genuine salvation through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, another another cost of disciples. Uh, it's another sign of true salvation. First John. Let's read this. First John. Yes. Did I speak for an hour now? Forty-five minutes? Oh, thirty-seven. Okay, thirty-seven minutes now. When I preached. Okay. When I started. Okay. Let's go to First John. Let's read this, okay? There will be verses that I will read. Listen to this carefully. Verse 29. 1 John chapter 2, verse 29. If you know that Jesus is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of Him. Chapter 2, verse 29. 1 John. If you know that Jesus is perfect and righteous, you know that Everyone who is practicing righteousness is born of God. Mm -hmm. Born of Him is another word for born again. The word born. Amen? Do you know why Joash looks like me? (laughs) Ano ko yun eh? (laughs) Right? Look, oh, oh. Sino mas buha po sa amin? (laughs) (laughs) You might like father like son? (laughs) Amen! You look like him. Yeah, and my Apollo has some of the Almeda eyes. Right? Yeah. So, you know, the fa- true followers of Jesus Christ, if they are practicing righteousness, it's because Christ is in them. Okay? So that, that God is changing them. To become more like Christ. Okay? That means you are born of God. Born again. Isinilang ka na kay Cristo. Hindi na kay Adan. Kaya nga born again, unang silang kay Adan. Pangalawa, kay Cristo. Kaya again, you have to be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Again in Christ, your second birth. Amen. Not again. Amen. Now, yeah, not against. I'm born against Christ. No. Okay. Let's read now. Whoever commits sin, okay. 
commits lawlessness, verse 4. And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins. Amen. Verse 6, whoever abides in Christ does not continue to sin. It's not a slave of sin. Whoever continues to sin has neither seen Jesus nor known him. So this is how you examine your life, signs of salvation. Are you still a slave of sin? Are you still habitual? Are you still a habitual sinner? It's like, you know, smoking, you know. One pack a day, two pack a day, every few minutes, he lights up another stick, another stick, another stick. Mm -hmm. So if you, you're a, if you, wherever you go, you have a bottle inside your jacket, whiskey, <laughs> right? <laughs> drink for every time because it's a carnal impulse then you know you have really not known Christ right because Jesus said uh, John said whoever uh, is abiding in Christ verse 6 does not continue to sin he cannot habitually sin because he is no longer a slave of sin you've been set free from sin if you are still a slave of sin then you have not really seen Jesus nor known him verse 6 that's how you know it's an easy test mm -hmm. amen mm -hmm. verse 7 little children let no one deceive you little children let no one deceive you he who practices righteousness is righteous just as Christ is righteous. You're practicing righteousness because you're a follower of Christ. Amen? He who sins is of the devil, verse 8. See, again, straightforward, John. Did you, when did you hear jo Joel Osteen, Joyce Mayer, talk like this? No. Mm. They love smooth words. Encouraging. Oh. He who sins is of the devil. Verse 8. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. But Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. So if Jesus is really in you, the works of the devil has already been defeated. Amen. Verse 9. Whoever has been born of God. Again, born again. Whoever has been born of God does not continue. It's not, an, it's not a habitual sinner. Because God's nature, God's nature or God's seed, the divine nature remains in him. And he does not continue to sin. He's not a slave of sin. He's not a habitual sinner. He repented of his sin because he has been born of God. Again, born again. See, John uses the word born of God. Same for born again. In this, the children of the devil and the children of God are distinguishable or comparable. This is how you distinguish obvious. who the children of the devil and who the children of God is. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Okay. If you do not practice righteousness, obedience. It's highly questionable that you are born again. John said, you are a child of the devil. Mm. Okay? This is how you know. If you, look, if you are really a child of God, family likeness. Mm. Right? Like Jesus. Family likeness, you know. Ano ko ba to? Di ko eh. Right? Something like that. Family likeness. If, if you look like the devil, then you are a child of the devil. If you look like Christ, then you are a child of you God. Act like the devil. So that's how you distinguish. If you are genuinely saved, the sign is godliness, righteousness, because God's nature is in you. Mm -hmm. Remember verse 9? His seed remains in him. 
He, he is not a slave of sin. He, he is not a habitual sinner, a chronic sinner, because God's nature, his seed, remains in him. The nature of God is in me. Christ is in me. I am a new creation, created in the image of God. So it's going to be, I will be sweating bullets if, what will we do tonight? I will ask Macamelo if we can <laughs> go to the casino. You will sweat. Right? Mm -hmm. And then I will ask Brother Gary the next day, let's go to the pub. <laughs> the stripper's pub. You will sweat bullets. Amen? Mm -hmm. Stripper's pub. Where ladies dance naked, right? Mm. Uh, yeah, they do that here in Canada. Amen. Back in the 80s. Amen. They call it the Filipino baptism. If you're just arrived from Canada, your Filipino friend will bring you there. Wicked friends. <laughs> your wicked friends will bring you. Okay, let's go there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> First we go casino, mm -hmm. and then tomorrow. And then Gilbert, I have a date for you. <laughs> <laughs> We have chicks. <laughs> don't, don't worry, I'm not gonna tell your wife. <laughs> Same thing with me. We can. See, if you're able to do these things mm -hmm. without, with ease, without being discomforted by your conscience, mm. then maybe God is not there. Yeah. yeah. Right. CRA too. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I I, I, I I guess I have no refund this year. Uh, maybe if there is very little. I haven't been getting refund, big refunds lately. Not like before. Uh, because when you have extra pension, you pay tax on that, right? <laughs> Gina's pension every month to help us do this ministry. We were forced to use it 2018 just to make both ends meet. That, that's the time Josh was in, Cal in Toronto studying, so we had to use it early. Amen? Good, big help. So, so our, our, because of that, we, our, our refunds were sliced. Right? <laughs> yeah. So maybe I can, if, maybe I can do some magic. <laughs> right? I can do some magic. Well, if the Holy Spirit is really in you, uh, you, can't do it. you can't do it. It's going to be hard. Yeah. Amen? You're not well, if you are genuinely born again, what we have learned today is that true Christians will repent of these things. If you've been doing this, before and you got born again like Zacchaeus returned all the money remember he was a corrupt tax collector Jesus went to his house he got born again same day he said I will return the money that was hidden under the carpet and behind the walls and Jesus said today you know what Jesus said today salvation has come into this house but if Zacchaeus was going to church 10 years and still collecting, you know, unfairly. Uh, that's very problematic because John said, you know, Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. John said he cannot continue to lie and cheat because the divine nature is in him. Right? Now, if you see or know anyone who are doing this, stay away from them. Mahawa kayo. Mamiya, pati ikaw, nagde-declare na rin. Kulang-kulang na rin ang mga declaration mo kasi yun ang advice ng kasama mo sa church. Pare-pareho na kayo ngayon. Right? Si beware of self. That's how you know. Amen? But we, we don't have to do that anymore because we are blessed. Amen? We don't have to sin because we are blessed. Amen? Isn't that great? 
I mean, you know, Jesus, he didn't have to steal money. He just said to his disciples, go to that spring, to that river, and there's a fish there with money in its mouth. Ang bayad ng mortgage yun. Ang bayad ng tax. Jesus and his disciples did not have to practice anything illegal. Because under that plum tree, Mount Camelo, there's gold. Yeah. We're gonna dig it after service. <laughs> there's gold there, and we're gonna split it. <laughs> Amen! Under that plum tree. See, that's how God works. You know, the greatest mystery, this is my last testimony. I really thank God because when we decided, you know, from Cloverdale, we left in 2001. Because we wanted to stay close to the bridge. Because I've been driving her morning and afternoon. Up to today, I've been driving her morning up. And so I got tired of the traffic. And then I said, we always shortcut here. Because the old bridge was jammed, right? The old Portman. So we always had the shortcut here. Avoid all the avoid Highway 1 lineup till Abbotsford. <laughs> so I, I drive inside Fraser Heights. And that's how we developed the, the idea, why don't we move here? <laughs> Closer to the break. And so we did. we did. And I remember we were before we bought this, I parked my car here. Right in front of this house. Resting. Over there, facing that way. Resting. And I saw this house. There's a for sale sign. But you know, after a year, we bought the same house. I said, wow. Isn't that amazing? I was just parking there and looking at this house, and now it's it's our house. It was sold. Yeah, it was sold, and then we bought it from whoever uh, bought it, right? That's why there's a for sale. We were the next owner. <laughs> Somebody bought it. And now after, you know, 20 years, ah, and now I understand. There's going to be a house church here. Amen. Amen. And you know, the Lord knows all these things. Amen. It's been planned. Amen? Amen. It's been planned. Amen. Amen. So that's why I'm saying is every month, it's our fifth monthsary for the house church. Monthsary. Happy monthsary. <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> I am flowers, sweetheart. <laughs> Five months na tayo. Hindi pa tayo nag-aaway. I'm sorry pa lang eh. Pero hindi naman ako mag-tiktok. See, the Lord will provide. Amen? And the Lord already knows, you know, every month is a miracle. That's my testimony. Every month is a miracle. And the Lord knows how to provide for all our needs. Amen. Imagine we've been in this house 18 years now. Thank you, Lord. Uh, since 2004. He's paying it. Yeah. 19 years. So next year is our 20th anniversary. <laughs> Happy 20th! Ayan ang mga flowers. <laughs> 20 years. Huh? Every month, bayan! 